call to order the Lake Mills City Council meeting for March 17th, 2020. And um, roll call, please. Mr. Foster? Here. Ms. Sh Ms. Fritch? Ms. Fritch? Here. Ms. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Fields? Here. And Mr. Fritch previously informed staff that he'd be unavailable this evening. Uh, we'll then uh, move on to item number three, the Pledge of Allegiance. All who are able, please stand. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. That's why. I want to thank everyone who came tonight and everyone who's watching at home or by computer. <coughs> <coughs> Takes us to item number four, correction and or approval of the Lake Mill City Council minutes of March 3rd, 2020. Council, there's a minute to the agenda. Item four. Oh, changed. item four. Hold on. Got to find it. Oh, it's got to be off of the computer. Yep. That's it. I was using the other one. Thank you for catching that. Okay, going backwards to our new item for declaration of emergency and proclamation granting emergency powers to the city manager. Okay, I guess we'll turn that over to the city manager to talk to us. I think we'll let Dan talk about it. Oh, we're going to let the boy. This is just the bouncing ball of the city council tonight. Bouncing ball of the city council. I'm going to stand up here so I have a mic. Uh, Dan Drescher, city attorney. Um, so we're in uh, pretty unforeseen and novel circumstances here with the coronavirus. Um, Jefferson County, the state of Wisconsin, uh, the federal government have all dis declared a national and uh, local and state emergencies. Um, for a number of reasons, the city of Lake Mills is contemplating following suit, and the resolution 2011 in front of you is um, both a declaration of a public state of emergency in the city of Lake Mills, um, specifically regarding the coronavirus, COVID-19, as well as a proclamation by the city government, by the city council, that grants emergency powers to the city manager in the event that the city council is unable uh, to manage their authority to engage in their role. Uh, I guess the first step I'd like to do is actually read the resolution. Um, perhaps then we can have a motion and we can comment on it, make changes that are necessary and proceed. Does that sound good? Get a motion for resolution 2011. I move adoption of resolution 2011. Second. And I have a second. You may proceed. Thank you very much. Resolution 2011, declaration of public state of emergency for the city of Lake Mills, issued by the city council in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus, and proclamation granting emergency powers to city manager. Whereas a novel strain of the coronavirus named COVID-19 has spread throughout numerous countries, including the United States, and whereas the World Health or Organization has declared a public health emergency of international concern, and whereas the United States Department of Health and Human Services has declared a pub public health emergency, and whereas the state of Wisconsin has declared a public health emergency, and whereas the conditions created by the Proclamation of these public health emergencies pose a continuing and substantial threat to public order, life, health, and safety of the citizens of the City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin. And whereas the City of Lake Mills, in cooperation with the local, state, and federal governmental entities, desires to take action to prevent exposure to and the spread of the COVID-19 coronavirus. And Whereas due to the emergency conditions, the city council at its regular meeting on March 17, 2020, cannot fully address the emerging issues and anticipates inability to conduct meetings during the term of the ongoing emergency. And whereas in accordance with Wisconsin statute 323.14 sub 4B, 
due to the emergency conditions. If the governing body of the local unit of government is unable to meet promptly, the city manager shall exercise by proclamation all of the powers conferred upon the governing body under Wisconsin Statute 323.14 sub 4a or Wisconsin Statute 323.11 that appear necessary and expedient. And whereas in accordance with um, chapter 64-1 of the City of Lake Mills Municipal Code, the City of Lake Mills has adopted an emergency management plan and the city manager is appointed as the director of emergency management services. And whereas in accordance with section 64-1 of the City of Lake Mills Municipal Code, the city manager has all of the power and duties established under Wisconsin Statute 323.15 sub 4 and Wisconsin Statute 323.11. Now therefore, the city council of the City of Lake Mills in accordance with Wisconsin Statute 323.11 does hereby declare a public state of emergency that poses a continuing threat to public order, life, health, and safety of the citizens of the, of the city of Lake Mills, Wisconsin, in response to the COVID-19 coronavirus and does proclaim as follows. In accordance with Wisconsin Statutes 323.11 and Wisconsin Statutes 323.11, Point fourteen sub four, the city council hereby grants the city manager for the city of Lake Mills all powers held by the governing body, including those necessary and expedient for the health, safety, protection, and welfare of persons and properties within the city of Lake Mills. The city manager for the city of Lake Mills is hereby authorized and directed, working with federal, state, and other uh, local authorities to take all reasonable and necessary steps to prevent exposure and or the spread of the COVID-19 coronavirus within the city of Lake Mills, including but not limited to those duties specified within Chapter 64 of the City of Lake Mills Municipal Code and Chapter 323 of Wisconsin Statutes. In addition to the emergency powers enumerated above, if the, the council is unable to meet, the city manager is hereby authorized and directed to take such actions as may be necessary and expedient to continue regular operations of the City of Lake Mills, including authorizing purchases and accepting bids, which would otherwise require approval of council, so long as such purchases or bids meet all statutory and local code requirements, approving register of payments for invoices, payroll, and other payments, authorizing temporary budget ad adjustments and transfers, authorizing the closure of municipal buildings and facilities to the public. Any actions taken under this authorization shall be presented to the City Council for ratification as soon as practicable. The initial period for this emergency is declared through April 21, 2020 and may be extended by the Council. Resolved this 17th day of March 2020. Thank you for reading it, Dan. Yes, ma'am. All right. Discussion by the Council or by Steve? So what are we going to consider the time frame as far as unable to meet um, is that defined our inability to meet uh, is lack of a quorum um, there are special exceptions that are being uh, special accommodations let's say that are being uh, proffered by the state um, that we discussed a little bit in the the work session prior to this regarding open meeting laws um, digital uh, appearances um, telephonic appearances etc uh, the important thing is that a quorum needs to be presented. Um, from previous discussions with council persons, uh, I'm not sure how um, available a quorum will be in the next couple of meetings. Um, I, Mr. Fritch is out tonight. Um, Ms. Schmidt it has, has... It has nothing to do with that. He's not here tonight, though. That's my only point there. Right. Um, I understand it has nothing to do with this particular strain. Right. Um, Ms. Sch Ms. Schmidt has expressed uh, concern about what's going on. Um, so if there is no ability to have a meeting, um, then the powers that are dictated in this document would pass on to the city manager. That's really the best answer. Um, declaring an emergency, um, a declaration of emergency situation right now is, is only prudent. Um, the proclamation regarding uh, the authority and powers of the city manager are a little bit more, if we need them, this document will have them in place. Meaning, if boards and commissions <coughs> cannot meet 
and um, there's something that occurs in the future as this is novel and um, basically a, a brand new experience that's developing, we are prepared to address normal business concerns that arise. Mike, the way this works is that, let's say tomorrow I make it like 10 or 12 decisions, we're not gonna call a council meeting tomorrow night. We're gonna probably let them roll to the next council meeting unless we determine that there's something that's really significant where we need another council meeting. Yeah, and that's what I'm getting to. How, how far reaching can this be without getting us back together and then presenting it to us? And then what are our courses of action if actions are taken on our behalf that we don't agree with once it's brought back to us statutorily the governing body that um, gives the authority or the power to the city manager the ceo the acting executive at that point um, the, all of the decisions that are all of the actions that are taken by that administrative officer must be ratified at the very first opportunity to do so so the very first meeting that you all do hold would be the appropriate time for ratification no i get i get that and what i'm asking is if you come for the ratification we look at it and we say hey whoa this is not right you should not have spent a hundred thousand dollars on laptops to get everybody out to vpn what is our course of action you can certainly disapprove action whether or not you can but it's um, already kind of, taken place yeah i know uh, that's times that we're in um, so certain things you could actually stop, certainly money that's expended in, in an appropriate fashion um, and adjustments to the budget, those might be more difficult to rewind. The way I listen to this is that these powers go to the city manager if we're unable to act, not right. if we're still in, right. able so to act. Every effort should be made to pull us together before actions are taken. 100% agree. So that's why I was getting to what's the time frame that are we going to... Your next council meeting is scheduled for April 7th. Got that. The following meeting is scheduled for April 21st. Yep, nope, I got that. I understand that. But what if a decision has to be made uh, tomorrow about something? And what is the time frame for you to get us together for an emergency meeting before the city administrator just makes that decision? Uh, I One hour, two hour, three hours? Uh, you could give us direction on what an appropriate time frame there is. Um, I, I don't necessarily think that um, that's what's contemplated by this action. Um, it is normal course of business in statute. Uh, the acting authority is given all of the um, governing bodies, duties, and powers to engage in actions that are consistent with the policies and the programs that are put in place by the governing body. So I wouldn't expect that there's a far reaching action that is taken as at first, mm -hmm. um, but then there is no contemplation. This, this document is created because we're contemplating a potential difficulty in the future of having meetings, of making quorums. If there is an ability to make a quorum to have an open meeting, then that is absolutely the manner in which the government should act. The, the fastest you can call is 24 hours. No, in an emergency. In an emergency two situation, hours. Two, two hours. Two hours? Yep. No, no less than two hours. Yep. Um, and the statute only gives the powers to the, uh, to the city manager, which he's always had the uh, emergency powers. It's just that this would declare and basically activate them Correct. and he's only allowed to do that if do actions that are necessary and expedient yeah we could later on say that wasn't necessary or that wasn't expedient and and the city manager certainly know that um, we could exercise our powers to discipline him as a result of him taking an action that's not expedient or necessary and we could have those arguments later but you know we're in a very fast acting environment right now we don't know from from one day to the next what's coming down the pike and 
You know, one of us could be exposed, two of us could be exposed, we could be quarantined. We don't know if there's going to be quorum capabilities available to us, and, and then what do we do if we haven't authorized him to act in our place? And we also have um, our computers and our telephones that if there is something, he can, in my case, I've asked him to call me because I'm more handy with my phone. <laughs> but, um, you know, for some of you, you live with your computer, and he could easily email us and say, I'm going to need to do this so that, you know, Mike, for instance, you get it and you go, whoa, 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 whoa. You know, you, you shoot back. And you've done that before. Mm -hmm. And I have done it in my way, too. So I think just the fact that we might not have a quorum and might not have a meeting doesn't mean we might not let him know what we think. Yep. And if he gets a very clear message that he doesn't have the backing of the, of the council, I don't think he's going to do it over our dead bodies. Yep. Yeah. And that's, yeah, and that's you, why I brought up. Do you up. feel that that's an open meetings violation? That's a potential walking quorum, the way that you defined it. If yeah. we're communicating. To me. If we're commuting back and forth between us and you, that's OK. Rather but, than communicating. But if, but if we're communicating and we're all in on all of the emails, that might not work. I, I defer to Dan. Over. No, you have a good understanding of it. But yeah. we're, we're getting you know, help from the league now for setting up, like we talked earlier, about being able to do remote meetings, and that would be great if we could do that. Even if we're quarantined, we'd be able to do a remote meeting. Yeah, and and my and concern on that issue, and this is developing with the league, there are ideas out there. I don't think it's as cut as dry. I mean, there's a number of opinions from a number of different attorneys involved in that conversation. And really, uh, the... Um, ability for the public to be involved in that process is, is at the crux of the open meetings law. And I'm not sure that we're set up at this point to accommodate the public in that manner. I'm not saying that it's impossible. I think that this is drastic times where, you know, you have to take reasonable steps and reasonable steps in certain circumstances are not the same reasonable steps in other circumstances. So uh, we're going to work through that issue. I don't believe that we have that nailed set at all. And, you know, I'm not against any of the stuff that's in here. Um, I, I think it's a, a good way to make sure we're covered, but that's what I want to make sure we're covered. And, and that I very much understand your concern, yeah, that, specifically the checks and balances aspect of yep. it. That you, you need it. And the way the stat, and that's why, I mean, this entire document is really just restating the statutes over and over again. And the reason that is, is because the statutes are the only guidance that we have. And I'm frankly, um, impressed with the breadth, with how broad the authority that's passed from the, yeah. the governing body to one individual in emergency circumstances can be. But that is the reason that the statute specifically says ratification at the first opportunity thereafter. Yeah. And that's, that is the protection. Yeah, I just, I don't want him to get in trouble for doing something that could potentially be against what we would have thought of. Um, that's one of my big concerns, and then I don't want stuff spent if there's other ways of doing it, and that's that's the reason I'm bringing those. For whatever reason. Right. Yeah. We you know. Say wait. To, this is Lake Mills, not Madison. Yeah. So we don't need that. Yeah. If this is moving so fast, would it make sense for us to meet the next four Tuesdays in a row instead of having a three-week gap in here? I mean, if this is so fluid and we need to be making decisions on a regular basis, why don't we meet on a regular basis? The, it could be a very short meeting. There is a fifth, are posted in advance. There is a fifth Tuesday in, in the month of March. Next Tuesday is currently scheduled with a completely full day of um, hearings, basically, with the plan commission, with the uh, joint review board prior to that. Um, I, I'm not against that idea whatsoever. I was hesitant to request a special meeting later this week because of the concerns that I've been um, presented with. I, but that's absolutely your decision. That is not my decision to make whatsoever. And it might be that you're still not going to have a quorum. We're supposed to be acting responsibly and 
You know, there's a risk. Yes, there haven't been documented cases in Jefferson County yet, but there's a risk just by all of us sitting here and coming and going through the building. I, I don't see, right now, I don't see that much of an uh, issue of something that's really time sensitive. It'd be different if we had an issue on the table that you know, we know is happening. But I think we can go with the way we are and if call it only if necessary. It's not like we've got a brand new city manager who we don't have experience with. He's been here since 2000. I yeah, don't. It's not a matter and of it's, trust. It's just making yeah. sure that right. he well, doesn't get in trouble with, um, with the powers. Not that you would, but it's just. Well, and it's part of our job to make sure we do our job. Yeah. I mean, it's more of that than anything. I, it is. I, I, you know. So I don't have a problem with this resolution, given, given the discussion we just had and the fact that we make it clear that you know, if there's something very controversial, I'd expect to hear about it, not after it's done, but before it happens. Yeah, and I don't see anything wrong with Steve contacting the council president before he makes some decision. It doesn't have to be all of us, but if well, he has the power yes. granted to him, he's just notifying the council president, I'm doing this. He could send and an email to all of us. All of us. He yeah, could do that I, too. Yeah, that's what I would do. I wouldn't do one. I would do all. Yeah. I called Diane because. Yeah, we just have to be she careful. Because I've asked call. him to. But, yeah, I'm going to notify all of you. There are situations that are going to dictate immediate responses coming up. And yeah, I don't, and I I don't that. think that that's. For instance, if something did happen and we did have to close City Hall, we should all be notified that that's happening. Yes. Maybe we'll be very fortunate. I think, I think that'll never happen. Everybody should be notified that City Hall is being closed. Well, that's true, but I'm just saying that would be one thing. Right. Just as an example. If for some reason, then what does, you know, and if it happens on the day of the election or that it would affect it, that's a whole other, yeah. I don't, I don't <laughs> so think let's I could, hope we don't have to do these things. I don't think I could close it on the election day that I'm overruled on that one. <laughs> Whatever. The governor and the. But I do see a lot of things like you said coming up that could very well make use of this because of the stuff moving so fast you know the, just today the addition of illinois so if anybody travels to illinois there and when they come back they're supposed to self-quarantine for 14 days you know that's stuff that you could make something about the city workers say you know if you're going or you go there technically i don't even really need that to have this resolution to do that. No, but it it would cover you because we would do the same thing to say. It just, yeah, I, I've been involved in a lot of debates already this week on whether we, the, seeing as the governor's done it and the county's done it, does the city really need to do it? So we felt comfortable with having, asking the city to do it just so you knew what was going on. Um, there are certain things, you know, like, Dan and I had a conversation. If he goes to Florida, you uh, were going to work from home for 14 days. Right. So, um, or you can come in after hours, but you're not you're not working with the rest of us if you're going to a place like Florida or California, or, you know, Washington, yeah. now Illinois. Or, yeah, or maybe money frees up. Um, from wherever that we can add to our emergency operations center, you know, stuff like that, that it's that quick shot that you'd need to act quick on. Yeah, and we've already been, you know, we've made a lot of responses to taking action and we've been instructing them to keep record of it so that we can get reimbursed from FEMA. Yeah. So we, we're trying to follow those lines and we're trying to look at what's going on. You know, there were, the sick leave policy from the mayor and water to, or in Madison today. Those are the types of issues that are going to come down and, and yeah, those are things you'd manage anyway. Well, 
until a budget amendment is necessary. Until I mean, a budget right. amendment is necessary. And in that case, it may not be necessary because we would have paid them if they were at work or not. Right. So, and if we're shutting them down for some reason, and it's our responsibility, there, there are some other ones that we debated this morning. If a firefighter or an election worker who's in volunteering getting paid on that type of uh, contracts coronavirus while they're working is at a workman's comp. And there are all these types of new issues that are coming forward that we've never had to deal with. Um, you know, we, every one of the department heads has emailed a ton of messages and ideas to me about what we need to do and how we need to do it. And we're trying to wade through those and see what happens. And who knows what our insurance company is going to do? Who knows what the state's going to do? And then how are we going to respond? And <clears throat> so, yeah, basically what this does is this does actually declare a state of emergency inside of Lake Mills. Yep. So that's what we're doing. So you know that, that there's a condition here that we're taking extreme actions? Yep. And, and uh, <clears throat> you know, if, if it needs... Be aware if it, it becomes an issue that I that we hit, I'm sure that we'll all discuss it and make sure that you guys know of it, just like all the rest of us do. Yeah. But in and case generally, you if, it, if we if it's that big, but now the VPN one and the and the laptops, that one will be just to the council. But you know, if we shut down city hall, that's going on. It will be on Facebook, yeah, and the newspaper and the websites and and those types of things. So. You may know about it a couple minutes ahead of time. What's the chain of command if you get hit with it? Betsy. Okay. She's next, and then I think it's Dan. Okay. I just wanted to know in case. I think everybody should be clear on what that is. Unfortunately, you aren't totally guaranteed not to get it. Yes. No, I've, we've thought about that. <laughs> is there any talk Do about they? opening um, even on a limited basis EOC centers as far as county or city or... Not in the county Status. or city yet. Um, we have discussed, you know, what type of operations there would be and how we'd have to handle that. We have not moved to that level yet. Um, obviously, if we started to have um, people that started to have it in Jefferson County, we might ramp up. Um, we would probably get some kind of notice from Donna, the emergency manager for Jefferson County. Then we would have to debate whether we're going there or we're staying here um, and, and what kind of cooperation they were looking for and those types of things. And so it, like I said, it, it remains rather fluid, but at this point in time, I, I haven't seen any need. We haven't experienced any super extracurricular um, other than a couple items where we are keeping track of our extra costs. Yeah, the state's opened theirs up already, but I, I don't know. There's probably a couple of counties that have, but that's about it. I think Fond du Lac and um, Waukesha may, might have. Waukesha. Yeah. I want to thank. Um, oh, I just want to thank staff for bringing this to us and doing what you needed to do to get it on the agenda and the, the two-hour limit that we had. And uh, go ahead. Um, so I just want to make sure that if something does happen to you and you have these, are these transferable down, or do we have to do this again? No, I believe that it transfers to the. Um, it, it does mention acting in the the statute. Yes. Okay. So we would just move to Betty or to Dan. Yeah. Betsy. Not Betty. Betsy. Betsy. Yeah. You did fix. Yeah, so I, the one that you guys have digitally is not the same one that is uh, in front of you in paper form. Uh, I had a couple of different people look at it, and they corrected some Scrivener's errors. Okay, all right. I did my best in my reading to relate those Scrivener's errors. Yeah, and I, I was just reading the statutes, and there's really nothing in there that... I, it's makes me incredibly broad and I, mean, I I question the league attorneys and, and the other attorneys on conference calls about you know what is the constraint here and, and really there's 
there's not an answer to that. It's incredibly broad in the event that the governing body is not avail available to meet, is not available to make decisions. If the governing body is not available, then the authority for those, those powers goes specifically to the chief executive, which is the city manager. I mean, it's an appropriate move, um, but you're right, it's incredibly broad. Yeah, and I might be a little bit more sensitive to that only because we had the prior experience when we were unable to act. It wasn't an emergency, it was self-inflicted when we had different council members who had conflicted themselves out and we needed to make decisions and we only had two members and you need three to get a vote and it, it really hamstrung the government um, in many situations and so you know, and it was just this thing that would never ever happen again, but it wasn't an emergency. But um, trying to work around, well, we can't get a decision about this and we can't get a decision about that because we have to have three members vote and we only have two available, it can really be a, a difficult thing. And so we need to have something because we might not have that opportunity to get us all together. And let's hope we never need to use this resolution. But it's better to have it and not use it than to not have it and need it. Yeah. Uh, I'm good with it. Should we call the question? Call the roll, please. Ms. Rich. Aye. Ms. Schmidt. Aye. 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 So a state of emergency has been declared. Yeah. <laughs> On our watch, too. Darn. Okay. Moving then to item number five. Now we do the corrections. Or did we do it before? No. No. Okay, good. Corrections and or approval of the city council minutes of the March 3rd, 2020 meeting. I move adoption of the... Council minutes of March 3rd, 2020 as written. Okay. Second. All right. Any additions or corrections at this time? Seeing none, call the roll. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Ms. Bridge? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. Moving to item six, correspondence. Anybody have something they would like to share with the council? back into my where I belong um, we've had quite a few emails in the last few days uh, the senior citizen center is closed library is closed and both of those came as correspondence um, I don't remember much else hmm? I don't remember much else no I, don't I believe remember. we had a citizen that was uh, Suggesting that we not have the public hearing on the kid oh, number eight. Right. Yeah. And I did get um, a couple calls after the newspaper came out where people thought the council had acted on the um, rendering in the paper. And <laughs> I said, what rendering? Because I hadn't even gotten my paper yet. So I uh, reassured those people that no, there's nothing even on the table for the city council at this time. And uh, I certainly would have appreciated that not having been printed and making everybody upset, but that's free press in America, so. Um, it was in the public document that was posted as part of the public hearing for the plan commission, so. That's where it came from? Yes. But I hadn't even seen it when the phone calls came because I didn't have my paper yet. So, I mean, I, I told them that. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I... Just a point of clarification there. It was in the Comprehensive Outdoor Recreational Plan, correct? No, it was in the TID plan. It's, not, it in the, in the it's plan? not in the corp. Okay, I thought that was the other way around. No. Okay, well... And... To tell you the truth, I was surprised that it was in there too. I know that we had looked at it internally, but it was like, mm -hmm. there's nothing that makes it a TID, part of the TID document, why would, why would you include that in there? Right. Um, 
but it, you know there was there were things included in the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan that were you know I didn't have anything to do with that either that was parks board in the yeah and so when it showed up I was when people were asking me about it I was like oh, okay let me check <laughs> so. but you know just to reassure people that no the council has not gone off on their little horse and ridden into the sunset <laughs> so uh, anything else that was a correspondence item for anybody okay um, moving then to questions and public comment and if I can find my little duty thing here uh, the public is encouraged to address the council at this time regarding items on the agenda public comment may also be made at this time on items that are not on the agenda if you have registered with the city clerk before the meeting has been called to order the state's open meeting law encourage discourages action by the council on items not listed on the agenda please keep your comments limited to three minutes and state your name and address when starting your comments and fill out the sign-in sheet provided on the podium so anyone in the office in the office in the audience who would like to speak to us at this time may go to the podium thank you for coming hi there hi do I sign first or do I sign? No, you could do that at the end okay uh, good evening my name is Mary Doyle I'm a resident of Lake Mills for 35 years and I live at 325 East Washington Street I pay property taxes on four properties in Lake Mills Considering the topic that we just finished with the COVID uh, virus, um, my, I feel now my concerns don't rise to that level. So with that in mind, please hear me out on a couple of topics I wanna comment on, and if you can answer some questions, great. Um, number one, uh, we've requested, we meaning Pat and I, have requested pedestrian signs at Doyle's Dogs. We were told we first had to have pedestrian crosswalks. Crosswalks took three years. We do have them now. We have been waiting for two years for the pedestrian crossing signs. Um, we are looking out for the safety of the children, especially. Uh, we, some of us are familiar with the tragedy on Mulberry Street. I just want to know when can we expect those pedestrian signs to be put up? My second topic, um, again, doesn't rise to the level of the, the, the virus. Uh, the bubbler on Main Street, Main and Lake Street, was repaired in 2019. And I happen to have a business on that corner, so I'm very familiar with it. Saw it used a lot once it was repaired. In 2019, it was removed when uh, street construction. And I'm just wondering if there's any plan for that bubbler to be put back. Um, my perspective, my opinion, is it's something that adds to the charm of our downtown Lake Mills. And it'd be nice if you know, we had it there once before. Is that something possible to put back? You probably can't put it back till we're done with the coronavirus. Well, that's <laughs> I, exactly. Just, but like I, mean, I said, I know that, this doesn't rise to the level. And you know, my concerns I'm, were prior to all this other uprising. But it's a good point, And I don't know. Well, right. I, I understand. Okay. Um, and then if you could just clarify for me. Um, so ne next week's meetings on Monday and Tuesday, are they taking place amidst the change in protocol for considering, you know, all that's going on? So are we, is there a meeting or not? I just want a clarification. Uh, and I, my clarification is I don't know. We don't know yet. We don't know where we stand on that okay. yet. I, I'm going to try and hold the one on Monday no matter what. Monday. Um, Tuesday we may cancel. Okay. Uh, we, or we may delay. Um, so, but. As you know, there is a lot of let activity me, on that. You, you asked the question, let's be specific. Pin number eight would be the question correct okay because we're going to hold the plan commission meeting and, we'll, and we're going to deal with tid number five tid number eight I, i'm going to ask the planner what the timeline issues are and some of the cost issues are and there 
there's not as much of a, a driving force behind that as you may have heard earlier. So um, we may cancel or delay that one. The, the Tuesday meeting? The Tuesday meeting, okay, and which is the public hearing where correct. they would act on it. Yes, yes. So the plan commission would act on it. It would still have to go to city council after that. So there, there are, and there are statutory requirements for the number of days from the notice to the hearings to the council meeting. And then from the start of the project to the end of the project, you have a certain number of days. So if you don't do that in that time period, you have to start all over with. So <clears throat> that, that would be the consideration that we'd look at. How much time do we have to delay it? Or if we do cancel it, what's it gonna cost us to start right. over and what are the timelines? But since there's no project, it's not as big of a deal other than the cost. And one last, um, with that meeting on Monday at 5 p.m., that is sometimes a challenging time for a lot of people to attend a meeting that work or you know families getting ready for dinner. So I just wanna make that point that 5 p.m. for the community input, that's not the most convenient. I'm sure there's more behind it than I know, but I'm just stating that. Okay, the, the meeting Monday night is a question and answer time. Right. It's, it's not community input, which would be oh. the, the Tuesday night meeting. Um, and like I said, um, I'm, we start at five. If you can't show up until seven, I'll stay. Okay. So that if you need to ask questions of me, I can answer them. If you wanna, we'll record the meeting. If you want to send um, emails to me asking questions, I will answer them during the meeting. Uh, and then you can watch it recorded online or on cable TV so that you can get a good idea of what the, the ideas are. Okay. Uh, <clears throat> mine are more along the lines of you know all the technical issues and because I don't vote, I don't, so any public hearing to me doesn't do any good. So this is just, we're going to kind of sit down in a room like this, kind of, and I'm going to probably sit here, and they'll just shoot questions at me, and I'll say, hey, okay, this is what happened. They're, this is what the ideas are. These are how we process these. So. Um, and again, we don't, uh, is that meeting happening on Monday? Yes, that meeting will happen meeting on Monday. will happen, okay. Tuesday is the Tuesday one Tuesday is where, the one in question. Yes. Okay. Well, I thank you for your time. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for coming. Sure. <laughs> If there's anyone else who would like to address the council at this time, you can come on up. Hello, uh, Dave Larsoul, uh, Lake Mills EMS Service Director. <clears throat> Basically, I'm just here to reiterate what Steve has already uh, mentioned before. Um, or Steve Wilkie, that is. I am basically here tonight to just uh, review some of the things that could possibly be happening that we may need to at least look at or consider uh, combining services on this. Um, I understand that there has already been a proposal put out with uh, two other agencies, but um, in order to take care of our community, we know people are going to be quarantined for 14 days. Um, with our ambulance service currently, the way that it is uh, going during the day, we will have issues <clears throat> probably in another two or three weeks if this goes through the way that they're predicting it. Um, I met with the state a couple times. They're talking that you're going to lose an average of probably a quarter to a half of your staff if you're in the uh, health care field. So just plan on that. <clears throat> so basically, I'm just here to say, hey, if there is some way to maybe combine services down the road, it is something that can be done according to the state. Uh, we would be able to basically uh, more or less cross-credential the fire department with us so that they would still be able to respond on the ambulance and continue 
to take care of the community. And that's basically what, what I'm here <coughs> for tonight. So I don't know if there's any questions, but I just wanted to reiterate that since uh, Steve has uh, talked about it already. I think that no matter what, at some point, we are going to run down on people if we end up having the quarantine. It, it's just a fact. I don't know what other easier way to say it. So, um, any questions from anybody? Um, Steve, do you have any questions? No, I, I have a pretty good idea what the conversation is. Yeah, I kind of figured Obviously, that. most of our people are volunteers at, for the fire department, so we don't require them to respond, and they may opt not to. Um, the debate is, and, and we would do everything we can to make sure that we have a response, particularly during the day. The thing that we want to make sure <coughs> of is, is that we have personal protective equipment. Uh, we're not going to have the police department respond unless it's under very specific types of conditions because generally they aren't medically trained and they don't do that. So that I don't know that there's an advantage having them there unless there's some real type of circumstance that is beyond most control. But the fire department does have those types of people. As long as we have the personal protective equipment in place, I think we would feel comfortable responding. Um, uh, we've basically already hammered out a pretty comprehensive agreement where we're going to respond to a, all second calls in the city, all pulseless non-breathers, all accidents. So um, it, it, our kind of response to that was <coughs> until we actually have the you know, Dave has most of the personal protective equipment for his people, and he knows that it's hard to get a hold of it. And so if we don't have it, because we've never done it before, we don't have it on hand, or not a lot of it, um, we're not going to do any responses unless we can get access to that. So if Dave, you can help us with that, we'd appreciate that. Uh, we obviously are working through the channels, because as I understand, and Todd can correct me if I'm wrong, but... They're requiring each agency now to make their own requests. Yes, they are. So, <clears throat> but if you could do anything to help that along, or, you know, if you can't get enough people and you already have all that personal protective equipment and then you're distributing it to us at that time, um, I'm sure that we would we would be uh, willing to help. Now, <clears throat> you know, the, the still the conversation about how many in the ambulance as it leaves town and, and how that impacts us. So. We're going to have to take a hard look at that, but I, you know, if it's an emergency, we'll be there. Okay. And if you'd be kind enough to sign in on the sheet, <laughs> thank you very much. Sorry. Is there anyone else that would like to address the council at this time on any topic that's on the agenda? We did not have anyone who wanted to speak on anything off the agenda tonight, did we? Nobody came to you before the meeting? Um, just the Doyles. Okay. Let me know that they would be here speaking. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. <coughs> All right, then closing. Questions and public comment to move to item eight, the city manager's report. I don't believe there's anything attached to it, but I do want to bring up some things. I sent you an email uh, from Cheryl Halsley, who was the DNR representative, who notified us that we received a $485,000 state or federal grant uh, from the sport and fishing department. Did say tentative. So, what what things do we? We have to sign a contract that says we're going to take care of a certain number of things. So, we received a four hundred and sixty-five thousand dollar firm commitment from the recreational boating grant, which is DNR, with the possibility in April of that going to four hundred and eighty-five, depending on how many additional grants come in under another project. At this point in time, it looks like we're going to get that additional twenty thousand. Um, that being said, uh, 
the last phase of the archaeological is two hundred and eighty three thousand dollars. <laughs> so it just happens to be that the additional money that we got to cover the project from the feds that we didn't anticipate because we only anticipated them giving us about two hundred and fifty thousand will cover the cost of the archaeological. Oh, so nice. that will be on your next agenda for an approval is to approve that that uh, report that project. And that's the recovery in the third phase. Yes. Yes. <coughs> right. I, nice. I don't ever remember ever seeing a two hundred and eighty three thousand dollar phase three report. That, that shocked me. Um, I'm pretty sure it shocked Brandon and, and Dwayne. <laughs> uh, but um, it's it's a pretty elaborate project, and, and um, they do cover a lot of areas. So you get to look at it next week if you want uh, Rick Edwards or Robert Watson to be here to talk about it. But it will be on your next agenda. Okay. Also in there, they stated uh, seventy-five thousand dollars for shared um, bills or invoices. Is that, that on top of that the was pre? That was pre um, award. So you know, if we had design work or archaeological work, that was still we could part use of the that seventy-five thousand dollars for that. But the way, <clears throat> and I'm gonna the way I'm gonna explain this is, is the project is nine hundred seventy thousand dollars roughly. Half of it's covered by the DNR through the boat, recreational boat, and the other half is covered by the sports fishing grant. We had originally thought that the sport fishing grant might only be $250,000. So we budgeted that additional money ourselves to cover that. So now that they're covering 100% of it, it actually leaves us with additional money that we could put into the historical work or the archaeological work. Uh, a little bit of a surprise. I was wondering, you know, originally we thought, well, we'll just take it out of fund balance. It's not a big deal and, and or out of the council contingency because, you know, but then when it came in, it was like, whoa. So when this grant notice came in, it was like, whew. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good to hear. Um, I think it'll be an asset to the, to the site. It should be one Incredible report. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, by the way, um, South Main has started. It has started. Uh, I think they've uh, caused us to experience several glitches. Uh, first of all, they weren't supposed to start Monday. They did. Yeah, they said they'd start today. Yes. And they started yesterday. Yesterday. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, they did some closures and some other things that surprise people. I think that um, they have had an unusually large amount of traffic driving through some very close calls. I think uh, they were worried about one ambulance call today. Um, the, but I, they haven't done a good job of noticing this yet, so we need to get hold of them. Um, Dwayne and Dave and Brian and Elisa are meeting tomorrow, and then they're going to try and put together a plan and work with the DOT guys to get something up that does a little bit better job. We're also going to talk to the chief of police about maybe at the appropriate time, which is uh, to put some more enforcement down in the area for a while. The uh, Their original report, I know, I know, Diane, you were at the... I was there and heard it. The, the public information meeting was is that they wouldn't start today. They would do some preliminary work, and they would really ramp up next Monday. Well, no, they really ramped up this Monday. Mm -hmm. and, uh, which surprised me. Which caught us all a little off guard. So we're, we're going to have to... Uh, right hand didn't know what the left hand was saying, I think. Well, we went based off of what occurred at the one meeting, and, and I think... Um, you know what Jeremy said, and now what's going on with Chad and Grant are, didn't necessarily get fully communicated. And Cody was ready to go, and so you know how Cody is. He's digging. He wants to be out of here on, on the date that he's supposed to be out of here. Well, it was just a, 
a gift, though, for, and that was one place where having no school Monday and Tuesday actually helped because we had that bus situation, too, for the two schools, right. which didn't exist now. because we didn't have schools, so that whole issue dropped right off. But otherwise, we would have had that issue on top of it, yes. too. Yep. All right. Um, last time you had a really big list for us, so this time we keep doing all the other stuff for the virus today, so kept you busy with that. Sounds right? Well, if you were at the department head of the meeting, we had a, a very, very long meeting with a very, very long agenda, but I try not to delay the meeting as much as I can. I try and concentrate on one meeting and, and mm -hmm. uh, do it okay. that way. I just thought that this item here was important because it'll be on your next agenda. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool, thank you. Item number nine acceptance of minutes of the zoning board of appeals on of april uh, april where am i of january 8th 2020 and the public works board of february 11th 2020 and they will be placed on file that takes us to item number 10 council of business um, first item of business a board and committee appointments i have two appointments one uh, for the library board, I'd like to appoint Christy Went. Uh, she was selected by the library board, and I concur with their selection. And uh, if we could get a motion to approve that appointment, I'd appreciate that. I approve the appointment of Christy Went for library board. Second. Okay. And uh, would you call the roll, please? Mr. Fields? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Ms. Rich? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. And then, upon recommendation from the Joint Rock Lake Committee, um, would like to appoint Susan. Now, I'm not sure on this pronunciation. Is Ness Nessiman? I believe that's Niesman. Oh, Niesman. Okay. I'm not very good on names. And um, would like to uh, place her name in for appointment to the Rock, Joint Rock Lake Committee. So move. Second. Okay. And would you call the roll on that, please? Mr. Foster? Aye. Ms. Rich? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? <coughs> Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. Good. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Item B, discussion decision on the prime uh, pyramid event venue, LLC class B beer and class B license application. Um, would you read that for us? City Council motion 20-3-2-1, authorizing the granting of class B liquor and class B beer licenses to pyramid event venue, LLC, 117 South Main Street, Lake Mills, Wisconsin, and appointing Elias Weedel as agent. Okay. And uh, this is uh, Eli Weedle, and this is for the um, former pizza, Anna Maria's Pizza? I got it right? No. No. Anna Maria's It was Anna Maria's Pizza yeah. before it was uh, Blue, 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 Blue Moon. Moon. That's it. Yeah. I am in the wrong generation. Sorry, people. Yes, Anna Maria's Blue Moon. No, yes. Okay. And they did surrender that license upon the closing of the business. Okay. So we do have that, that license available to issue. So it's just going to pass from one to the other? It's a new license, but it is available. Okay, that's good. Thank you for filling us in on that. I move the adoption of motion 2321. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Ms. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay, I think that'll be a nice addition to the downtown, especially for young people. Maybe old people too, I don't know. We'll have to see. But uh, something with some, some liveliness to it. 
Item C, discussion decision on the bid award. Would you read that for us, please? City Council Motion 20-3-2-2, authorizing the city manager to execute an agreement for contract LM 1-20, Sandy Beach Restaurant and trailer number 1A demolition. And I will move adoption of motion 20-3-2-2. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Discussion on the item. I was really surprised at the varying of the bids. That was hard to believe. Um, two of the bidders had worked here before. Um, and so we were used to their work, and they were they were in the 30s. I mean, they were below 30. Uh, I think there were three that were below 30. Um, one of them, the one the actual bid winner has a close re relationship with Lalan Concrete, so they knew that they could get in and out of the Sandy Beach Road relatively easily, and so I imagine that impacted their bid. Now the, and they're from Sussex. Sussex, yeah. Uh, the other really high bids were, you know, the Milwaukee yeah. Yeah, area. Yeah, that's true. So I, they were within our range. The most of them were within the range that we anticipated. So I'm, I'm not shocked. Um, it's not un, it's not unusual to get a few outliers in a bid. But we, we feel very comfortable with the bid. Who do we have that um, monitors their progress and any issues? Okay, that's that's what I thought. And Rob. And Rob, okay. okay. Dwayne, you know, pretty much wrote the contract, um, has done all the um, site visits, did the pre-bid meeting and wrote the addendum, so he's pretty much up on it. Any questions you have or the analysis of the final bids, but uh, they, they were clean. Okay. Yeah. I can't think any questions, so just was making sure that we had somebody on top of it, and I'm assuming there, I can't remember if there was a possibility of asbestos in there, maybe in the tiles, the floor tiles and stuff like that. Uh, there was a there was a report done on both of the yeah, buildings. I think um, I remember most of it. And we required the contractor to have a subcontractor that that was certified to do that type of Here work. All. Okay. And I don't know if it was in work? the packet, but they did they did state their <clears throat> their comp their subcontractor in that case. And I apologize, I don't have it in front That's of okay. me. But they were required to state who their subcontractor yes, it was. Yeah. Will the um, Highway 89 work have any effect on them coming and going? So we provided them with a notice in the addendum to all the contractors to to re-notify them a little more clearly that they they will have access, but they need to coordinate with the state contractor, Lalonde. Um, obviously, residents that live along uh, Sandy Beach Road are provided access through this project or through the DOT yeah. project. The difference here is if it's all uh, equipment and, and trucks hauling in and out, in and out uh, during the, the demolition project, that's a little more coordination for the DOT contractor as well. Okay. Um, and so but we were clear in writing an addendum to kind of clarify that fact. Yeah. Steve did say that they have a close relationship with the, the paving, people that are paving South Main, so. Yeah, the general contractor for South Main. Should who, help. Who they were required to coordinate with uh, this company has a close, a long-standing relationship with them. So okay. I think I'm imagining that's why they bid so well. Okay. All right. Call the roll. Mm -hmm. Ms. Schmidt. Aye. Mr. Fields. Aye. Mr. Foster. Aye. Ms. Fritch. Aye. Motion passed 4-0. Okay. okay. Moving on to item D, discussion <coughs> and decision on the 2020 street and sidewalk maintenance program. Could you, do we have a, read that please? City Council motion 20-3-2-3, approving 2020 street and sidewalk maintenance plan. <coughs> okay. 
move adoption of motion 20-3-2-3. Second. Okay. Is so we pulled some some roads or streets off of this from what we had initially thought we were going to do, correct? Uh, mm -hmm. um, I, no, I don't think so. I think you might be thinking of something else. Um, we had looked at some streets last year, um, but based on um, last year's plan and the PACER ratings, um, I think this is pretty consistent with what we thought we would do. Um, any street that would have been on last year's that looked like it was going to be done this year um, <clears throat> probably got pulled because of water and sewer. So like Reed Street, Reed Street was actually a standalone project for sewer. Right, that's what I was thinking of. Yeah, and that, was, that wasn't under this program, but it was a standalone program under sewer <clears throat> in the capital budget. And <clears throat> there was just so much water work um, that we just didn't feel comfortable digging up the sewer um, and repaving pretty much the whole street and then having to go back relatively soon because on top of the old water main, every one of the laterals water service lines was lead and so probably what you're going to see from us is a proposal to move that money that we would have spent at that location and run the manifold from the Tyranina Road um, lift station near well actually from the Tyranina Park lift station to the uh, uh, to the Tyronina Park Road lift station there in front of Lake Mills Market um, so that we start getting that manifold built around the edge because what we're noticing is that the most significant issue that we face is, as a wastewater treatment plant system in the distribution area is that Elm Point Road lift station. And so getting that manifold constructed will substantially alleviate those problems. We can spend some, some um, we can take some of this money. We can also use some impact fee money for that because that was set aside for that. Uh, so we can uh, go ahead and do that project. So probably what you'll note is, is that when we do that project and we award the contract, you're gonna be asked to um, note that there's, uh, and approve the impact fee dollars that will be used on that. Uh, but that's not that's not part of this plan. This plan is basically, an, uh, okay, Dwayne, go ahead and talk. <laughs> so this is a continuation of our street maintenance program based on uh, work that we've done with uh, that we've done over a number of probably five six years now. Um, the budget this year is approximately five hundred thousand dollars for street maintenance. The the first part of that is we looked at, uh, and <coughs> bear with me, I will pull up a spreadsheet here. We looked at all of the streets that are rated five through eight in the city that have not had any kind of maintenance in the last seven years. And that listing is one of your spreadsheets that you had in the packet today. The top portion of that spreadsheet in general is the Cass and Gladstone, Plainview, uh, Stony Road area that we're proposing under this project, and it's shown green on this map, um, as chip seal for this year. Um, this project, again, would be on the smaller side of our chip seal program, and when the project is, is relatively small, we've been working with Jefferson County staff um, and having a contract go through them. Uh, this size of project for chip seal looks like it will be in that range as well this year. We're, we're estimating between twenty dollars and $25,000 for the Chip Seal program this year. Uh, you'll note under that spreadsheet there were a number of other streets. Um, there were other candidates that fit that criteria. Most of those were located down, down in the, around the park downtown, Madison Street, East Lake Street. Uh, given all of the work that was done last year, given the unknown of what, is hap what could potentially happen in TID-8, 
we decided to hold off on any kind of maintenance in that area this year. Um, so you'll note that on the bottom of the spreadsheet at this time, we're not recommending those to be chip sealed at this time. Now, moving on to then uh, the other portions of the capital improvement plan. This, the next spreadsheet that talks about capital improvement plan uh, shows all of the streets that are less than five, so rated one through four, meaning the worst streets in the city. The listing starts with the capital improvement plan that we've been talking about for a number of years, and there's always a dynamic uh, document. Uh, as of last summer, uh, the top portion of that spreadsheet has a listing and a, and a date um, ranging from projects from 2020 all the way through 2000. 2030. Below that, we then start adding other other streets that we could consider doing some type of maintenance to. And highlighted in yellow is our recommendation for this year's maintenance projects. Um, so we'll just quickly go over those hopefully here. Uh, go ahead. Any questions? Oh. The first one is uh, First one on the list is Lake Street, East Lake Street from the bridge to CP Avenue. This is probably was one of the most difficult questions, and as Steve mentioned earlier, as you look through the spreadsheet, most of the projects that are in the first 10-year program are really related to a lot of water main and infrastructure replacement. When we're talking about maintenance or street maintenance, we're trying to do a mill and overlay, we're trying to do uh, a pulverization and, and replacement not necessarily looking to completely do all of the utilities. As we continue to do the, this maintenance, and our program is now in its fifth or sixth year, we're finding that that list is becoming rather difficult to meet that criteria. So one of the outliers in this list is, is that Lake Street piece from the bridge to CP Avenue. This is a street that's uh, currently rated about a three. If you've driven it, it's a very highly traveled piece of roadway. Um, the utilities underneath the water main has had breaks in the past. Um, the sewer, while is not in, in any disrepair, it has, it will be in the long term the first pipe that would be undersized, but that's long term. What we're proposing on this one, which is, uh, is that we would Similar to what we did on South Main Street, we did double chip seal to extend the life for the reconstruction that's occurring today. What we're proposing to do is a mill and overlay on this section with the anticipation that nine years from now, that will be a total reconstruct and the water main will be replaced. So we're looking at a short-term 10-year fix at this time. The other streets that are <coughs> in the list uh, that are shown in pink or purple, um, other streets, probably a keynote, uh, Owen Street from Reed Seat to County Trunk Highway V, if you've driven that. Uh, it's a rather rough section. Um, that one, we're looking at uh, fixing some of those uh, joints and then overlaying. It's still a rural section, so raising the, the road level by adding some overlays is not going to be a problem because the curb doesn't exist yet. A couple other projects that we've talked about doing with street staff availability, Griffith, from Griffith to Dodge on Aaronside Road, a small 16 and a half foot piece of pavement that's deteriorating, as well as uh, the short end of Washington Street. Uh, there were some drainage issues and a sump pump issue there uh, last year that was cleaned up by the property owner. And now we're going to look to try and do the maintenance that we didn't do last year because of that. Any questions on those yellow highlighted? That leaves, uh, again, still leaves us a list of uh, 10 or 15 streets down below that are not to be touched this year and not proposed to be touched. And if you look at the bottom of the total, we're looking at, with the 25000 on the chip seal, we're looking in the range of about uh, 440000 of that $500,000 budget. Uh, allows us about a 17% uh, contingency 
to allow us to evaluate what the spring brings us here in the next several months. As you know, we, we tend to review this as we head into August and September and the final portions of the maintenance plan in case there are any other recommendations that we don't foresee at this time. Uh, schedule would be as if you approve tonight, uh, we would look to go to the ad on the paper next week and we would be before you in the first week, first meeting in April with, uh, or the second week in April with uh, contracts. Uh, that would put us about a full month ahead of schedule from where we have been the last four years with this program. So we will, uh, of course, if you approve this and we go to bid, we will will be back in front of you with those bids for approval. I have a question. <coughs> um, sidewalks that don't need to be replaced, but just need to have that machine go over to even up the... Is so, that part of this kind of thing, or is that considered just general maintenance? It is part of this. So we did give a spreadsheet on sidewalk um, in this program. What we try to do is we keep a list of calls that if people see trip hazards, they call the Public Works Office. Uh, we maintain a list as the year goes on. Uh, we look to fix those either by complete replacement or by adding some fill material um, or by grinding, as, by as grinding. you've spoken. Yeah, I think the ones I was looking at would have been grinding ones. Okay. But even that grinding, there is a cost associated with that. Mm -hmm. uh, Somebody has to do it. Yes. It doesn't get done overnight when you wake up in the morning when you come back. <laughs> so we, we evaluate those uh, as the complaints come in. Um, as we've explained to the Public Works Board, um, this year it looks like the complaints Usually our complaints are gonna start now and will really ramp up in the next several months. Um, we're already at a list that puts us very close to the budget um, this early in the season. So uh, going to then doing our normal, if there would be a, additional funds, we do go to a normal counterclockwise rotation around the city. I think we're currently in the Northwest uh, portion of the city at this time. Okay. We have a motion on Yes, okay. I'm becoming. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, any other discussion? Let's call the roll. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Ms. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 3 0. Okay. All right. And that moves us on to item E. <coughs> Discussion and decision on the Jefferson Street reconstruction. Do we have a mo motion for that? Let's see. Let's check. Do, 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 do. Yep. Please read that. City Council motion 20-3-2-4, authorizing the city manager to prepare bid documents for the reconstruction of Jefferson Street. Got it. Okay. Do I have a motion? So move. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Sorry, I'm at the wrong one. Hold on a second. Let me That's get okay. Here. It wasn't coming up. Uh, second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. And my computer's moving very slowly. Yeah. I got it coming up. It's got the 19 virus on. <laughs> oh no, oh no. I hope not. Yeah, mine was moving really slow. I well, see. anyway. Um, <coughs> comments or anything on that? So this is... Jefferson's. Yeah, this is using TID 3 funds. Yes. And there is plenty of funds in there to, to make this happen, or...? We have... Um, we get about a hundred thousand, a little over a hundred thousand dollars here in TID number three. Um, we have a. Uh, this is a, about a five hundred and sixty thousand dollar project. Um, so we could pay it off generally within seven to eight years. The TID's got like twenty some years left, over twenty. 
so it, it should more than adequately pay this off and, and still have funds left over in the long run. Um, this project uh, came to the top, first of all, because it's in TID number three. Um, last year we sent a lot of truck traffic this way because from the construction of the school and South Main Street because it was a very low quality street. Um, and conversations with the planner in relationship to the project that you approved earlier for the um, work at the aggressive metal shop, it became evident that we had the cash flow to handle another project. And um, this one came to the top. Not only does it replace the street and add sidewalk and curb and gutter, it uh, fixes the water main and does a portion of CP Avenue around the curve. So probably the main contributor to the TID in this area was has been Chapter 2, and this does connect to their main truck entrance and uh, to their employee parking. So it seems to me to be an appropriate project. Good. We did do the sanitary sewer a couple of years ago. Um, when they built that uh, second building, not the second phase, but the second building, they did run a new sanitary sewer connection in here, so the, the sanitary sewer in here is relatively new. And there's only a little bit at the far um, east end. Will we have to sell bonds? This, this one does qualify for bonds, um, so yes. Um, some of them, you know, like a lot of stuff this year is projects, but this one is, is actually a bond. And it's a, it's a straight up Geo bond because there's no developers agreement guaranteeing payment. We already have adequate uh, increment to make the payments. Is there storm sewer? There is not. That's part of the street project, and it's not a lot of storm sewer because it's basically going to drain down the ditch along the old railroad right away. I don't know if you remember the last time we cleaned that out, um, but. Yeah, part of this project will probably be uh, redoing that along the the old right of way out to Rock Creek up there by behind the canning factory. So, I'm sorry, this just goes right to Grove. It doesn't um, go all the way to Grove. It stops um, short it's because shorter. a couple of years ago we did Grove, uh, we did pass Grove, we did uh, uh, Grove all the way down and then around the curve. And as part of that, we came, I think we gotcha. came about okay. past That's Grove great. about this far. Yeah. And so the project actually starts right here and runs over too. And then it, as part of the project, it, it turns and goes down CP Avenue a ways. One of the one of the issues that of looking north on CP Avenue is is I, the parking lot to Chapter Two and the access in, to this property here. They both have virtual driveways that run the full width of their property. So if we go in and do curb and gutter, we're going to have to change all that. So at this point in time, I I wasn't ready to do that. Gotcha. But it, going south, there's already <coughs> curb on the east side. So adding curb on the west side and redoing the pavement was a benefit. And there, as you can see, there's already sidewalk over here. So bringing the sidewalk along the south side and pulling it out um, makes a connection. Add some benefit. Could make a shorter route to the high school for, for certain people on the east side. The, uh, we didn't put it on the north side because of the drainage issues on the north side. It would take quite a bit of more reconstruction and, and it would get into that stormwater detention basin outlet. Yeah, that'll we make a nice little walk downtown from out in Brookstone all the way down through there. Yep. When do you anticipate that starting? Uh, this may be actually in 21. Oh, really? Yes. Why is that? Um, we don't like bidding this late in the year. I mean, we're just oh. now authorizing the design. <coughs> and so, <coughs> you know, 
it would um, probably be better for us to wait until the next year um, to see what happens. Uh, it, it all depends on uh, how the budget starts falling together and those types of things. But, but uh, generally, we, we like to see that now. That being said, you know, we already talked about changing Reed Street to the manifold, and that, that we would want to bid this year. We may just combine the two and, and run them together to get as big of a bang for Better the buck. Bid. As, yeah. But okay. our initial conversations were waiting until next year just because this wasn't through the normal processes. So uh, this allows me to do the design now. It doesn't allow me to award the contract. Gotcha. So if we bid it, you know, you'd probably see the bid documents. We'd say, hey, these are the bid documents that are going out. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. But I'm, I'm <clears throat> glad I asked that question. Anybody else have questions or comments? All right, call the roll. Mr. Foster? Aye. Ms. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. Moves us on to item F, which is the discussion decision on Mud Lake Road project. And I'm interested in hearing what you have to say about that. <laughs> yeah. There's a prepared motion. Did you want me to read that title? Yes, please. City Thank Council you. motion 20-3-2-5, approving the construction plans for the reconstruction of Mud Lake Road, TID number five. Thank you. Sorry, I didn't mean to. I had my little mind on where I was going. So. Okay. So I'll make a motion to approve motion 20 3 2 5. Second. Second. Thank you. Now we can discuss it. The reason I was interested, you know, particularly interested is I've had a lot of people from Mud Lake Road ask me about it. So. Oh, good, I can get all my answers tonight. So, uh, Obviously, we've been working with the developer down there and approving uh, Tyronina Point Road, and uh, so that's why TID 5 was more critical than TID number 8, as we've already discussed. Um, <clears throat> Brandon has prepared the bid documents, and uh, we're trying to stay on a timeline consistent with what the developer wanted to see for his construction. Um, the so we're I think we're prepared to send these it advertises on Thursday it advertises on Thursday so but we can always you know not do that if you guys <laughs> don't approve it we're just trying to be prepared you know just because there's an ad in the paper doesn't mean you actually have to bid it so <clears throat> but that's what we're trying to do we we've been trying to keep on that schedule as tight as possible um, some of it has to do with the fact that we're using a lot of fill material in the roadway to bring the road up on the north end because it takes a big drop and then goes down and so it saves we don't have to put in a lift station if we can fill that road and where do you think we're getting the fill from south main street that's what i was thinking so while they're digging south main street we're trying to get that dirt and move it to mud lake road so and, and then to top it off, the same contractor who's doing the one project is likely to give us a great bid on the next project because they can handle those two projects together and the moving of the dirt and all that. Save a lot of mobilization costs Save too. A lot of mobilization costs. Yeah. So we've been, we've been pushing this pretty hard um, for that reason. And what is the, um, how many feet is the road gonna be raised? That's a brand new doing. <clears throat> uh, the most is about eight feet. Eight feet. Um, probably on average is more like four feet. On the south end, it'll be about the same as where the road is now. Um, there's a low spot kind of right across from the, the Topol Barn that's kind of at the tip of uh, A and Mud Lake mm -hmm. Road there. Um, that's the area where it'll be about eight feet of fill. So the road really kind of dips down there right now. So with that road being raised, 
that will help deal with the water issues coming down the hill? Um, the road is being raised primarily uh, for sanitary sewer. Um, right. We're but tying under the sanitary sewer um, on south at the end of South Main Street project, and so in order to keep that sanitary sewer buried at appropriate depth, you needed to raise the road, um, and it will also help with some of the water. That because it, it some kinda, people were concerned with the water. I don't know if it was going across Medway Lake Road and into the field across the street. Yes, yeah. at, historically there were. There's actually a culvert there for it to back up through, but it, yeah. I'm but sure it, was, it runs straight down that hill and across the road if it can right. during heavy rains, which we've had a lot of recently. The, the design has obviously curving gutter and storm inlets, and the water actually all runs to the, the detention basin at the um, north end of the project. And then once that hits the 100-year flood, then it starts backing up into the system, and there's an overflow that allows it to flow through the pipes out back onto the site to the south of the Topol Barns. Um, so we, we talked to Trent about that quite a bit after the Public Works Board meeting. Um, and so, yes, the stormwater will be handled s significantly better. It's a, it's a difficult project in that um, there's no real high quality outlet. Yeah. Um, but as far as, as um, being well designed, it's well, it's over designed for what our normal uh, requirements would be. So coming out of it, uh, Dwayne and Brandon and I felt pretty comfortable with, with the uh, scope of the design and the, what, then the resulting water flow and the long term ability to handle that water even as we continue to develop more to the west. And what's the timeline? When are you hoping to get started on that road, that part? Well, if we were to advertise on Thursday, we would have a two-week window for the contractors to put their bids together. So we would receive bids in early April and then hopefully bring it to you for a bid award that first meeting in April, the regularly scheduled meeting. Um, we, it would be beneficial, I think, for everybody, as we've been talking about with the interaction with the 89 project, to have a contractor be able to start working there as soon as possible um, because uh, the 89 project, they're going to start laying water main next week. And so um, that we would like to take any sort of fill coming out of utility trenches or road grading, which they're going to do right behind the underground utility installations uh, to be able to come to this project. So anyways, it, yeah, it would they, be April, they, early April, hopefully, we'd be able to award the contract. Um, contractor could get on site you know, if it's yeah. if it's somebody who's already here, it could be <laughs> real soon, a couple of days after the award. But um, yeah, because otherwise you won't be able to get that ground you're trying to get from right. the other part of the project because they're going to say get it out of here and you have to take it someplace. <clears throat> right, and it's going to be more expensive for them to truck it someplace oh, farther my, away, yes. and more expensive for us to truck new stuff in from someplace farther away. Yeah. So okay, I get it. Okay. I mean, I know some of the people involved, or not involved, but affected by this are watching tonight on television. So that's why I wanted to know that. So it'll be sooner than later if we can. Correct, yeah. Hoping there'll be a contractor on site by early May would be my hope at the, at the latest. Okay. Any other questions from Council? Call the roll, please. Ms. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. Item G, Resolution 2010. You have a motion to read on that one as well? Let's see what's. Council Resolution 2010, please read that for us. Resolution 20-10, approving intergovernmental <clears throat> cooperation agreement to establish the Fire Department Shared Services Agreement with Watertown and Johnson Creek. Okay. And uh, do I have a motion? I move adoption of Resolution 2010. 
has to be you, otherwise we... Second. Okay, a motion and a second we have. Okay. So I was trying to understand some of it, and a lot of it said it geared towards support or part of with Johnson Creek is Johnson Creek disbanding stuff or am I reading something wrong or what what am I missing what am I missing is this just everybody gonna give support to everybody but it just sounded like Johnson Creek was in dire need of support is what I read in everything that was in my currently my packet. that is a a true statement. Um, Johnson's Creek Fire EMS um, has a, a staffing problem and needs help. Um, but uh, it, the the agreement goes much further than that. Um, we all need help during certain times of a day or or the week. And um, the, our main focus when we when we uh, came together for this uh, agreement was to address those shortfalls during the day when we're all shorthanded for fire calls and um, this this agreement talks about auto aid which is different from mutual aid so um, if there's a fire in Lake Mills Johnson's Creek in Watertown are being dispatched at the same time as Lake Mills. So we will get resources here faster um, than what we would if we were to call mutual aid. And the, the benefit for all of us with an auto aid agreement is when ISO comes in to raid our fire departments or our service, because it's, it's much more than just what we as a fire department can do it looks at dispatch um, our water department and and uh, our equipment and our training and so forth auto aid gives us credit where mutual aid doesn't so that would be a benefit um, for all of our <coughs> communities and we obviously aren't able to bring the EMS portion in because it's not ours. Not ours. Um, looking at risks, what are what is our risk profile if we go to that uh, to aid of say Johnson Creek or Watertown, and then we have something happen here at the same time? I mean, is there? Well, if 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 we go any place at any time, whether it's under this agreement or current mutual aid agreement, yeah. um, we backfill our community with somebody else. So, you know, under Mavis, um, the policy is you keep 80% 80, um, 80 of your resources in your community and you only send 20. Right. So you always have coverage. Um, so when if, if you agree to this agreement the three chiefs have to redevelop our mutual aid box alarm system cards to reflect the auto aid um, because there, there will be change um, with our much bigger picture which is the mutual aid box alarm system why is there the big push with this now? I know when we talked last month at our meeting, you said to incorporate EMS with this would make it go much easier. I guess why is it split up now and I thought this, we were looking at going, kind this, of combining them to, in the agreement. Um, I guess, I don't I, if are you talking with Lake Mills EMS and Lake right. Mills Fire? Lake Mills EMS and Lake Mills Fire working on this agreement in a combination. We started this, when I say we, there was four chiefs. Jefferson was included. Um, they stepped out for um, reasons that, that they have. Um, and I don't, you know, manage, supervise Lake Mills EMS. I'm doing what I feel 
is needed to provide the best protection to our citizens when it comes to fire. Now, the other two agencies, uh, Johnson's Creek and Watertown, in the agreement, there's talk about EMS and paramedics and all that. That's between them. I'm not a player. Lake Mills is not a player in that. And, and you know, um, this is this this agreement here. Again, it started with four departments. Um, we felt that there was a need, a recognized need. Um, that something needed to be done to help our communities out. We started this before Jefferson County contracted, um, was it Wisconsin Policy, Policy Forum, Forum, to do a study countywide for shared services, including fire, EMS. There has since been um, separate studies that are looking at those shared services. So now if something develops with a much bigger agreement, we'll most likely be a part of that and this would, would dissolve. When you so, talk about shared equipment in here and resources, is there, I mean, are they looking at borrowing a truck or something or specific equipment where there's reimbursement in there? How would that work? No, that's, um, if, they have an event going on or we have an event we need staffing we need equipment we can utilize them as part of the agreement and i think to go back to uh, mr foster's uh, question earlier the three departments the three agencies communities do not lose their individual identity we are still the Lake Mills Fire Department, Watertown, Johnson's Creek, but we will have shared um, standard operating guidelines, policies and procedures as far as how we will operate and function at a, an emergency scene. We will have a shared and joint um, training plan. So we are all training the same. Uh, so when we do show up at a scene, um, we know what each department will be doing and how it's going to be done. So I'm assuming all that work is on the each individual chief's shoulders to make sure that everything is matching and yes and that's in this the document here from our, our last meeting as far as our priorities and, and what we need to uh, yeah. get accomplished. It sounds like under this agreement uh, if you're short staffed uh, you aren't showing up at the fire and then realizing that it's bigger than what you anticipated and then you ask for mutual aid. Yeah. This saves time. It gets the resources and the personnel there right away. That is correct. And uh, so I, I can see where that's a, a big plus to our community because during the daytime, you're kind of short. Yep. And we all are. You know, even Watertown is big as they are. So the, <clears throat> the agreement from a fire department perspective is good. We also share the same medical director across the board, which is the same one that, that or me says. medical policies. I think um, they actually all use Aurora, but we've all come to an agreement that we're sharing the same um, medical policies. The, so you know, if Dave wanted to go in and sit down with them and negotiate that deal, I, I don't have any, I don't think there was any reason that that couldn't be done. I, you know, <clears throat> I know that they were looking at the three chiefs, fire chiefs, and, and we told them we don't do EM, EMS, and they were like, okay, well, we'll hammer this out, and they did. But if, I, I don't know if that would be a separate agreement or if you get included in this one. I, I don't know. That's that's something that you. Um, Jeff Romer, who is the current acting fire chief in Johnson Creek, is a consultant who does these types of intergovernmental agreements. He, he and Ed Hanschel for RW management. RW management. Uh, yeah. He sold out to some other outfit now. Yeah, <laughs> they always do. Yeah, I just think that may be a little difficult to include.
incorporate ours into the one that's already part of the fire department. I just, I'm not sure if, I mean, it could probably be done, but obviously ours is a, I don't want to say for profit, but they're, they make money off the calls, and I'm not sure how the one for like Johnson Creek or Watertown, if they're part of the fire department, I'm not sure how they reimburse or what they do, if it's totally different or. I know that Johnson Creek bills. Um, no, Bill. I don't know about Watertown, but at Johnson Creek, no. they they definitely are are trying to cut as much of the cost off of the EMS service as possible. So I don't I don't know that that's an issue. I, what I'm looking at is, is they need to sit down and the two that yeah. are looking at sharing mutual EMS need to sit down with. Lake Mills EMS because they're a separate entity from us. Yeah, they I have a agree. separate board. They do those things. We couldn't negotiate for them or or do those types of things. I don't. I don't know that we would. You know. Yeah, I don't even think that from would come a fire up, perspective, this come benefits before us. us. Then. Yeah, from a fire perspective, this benefits us. Yeah. And, and we've you know we've you know sat down and negotiated with Lake Mills EMS and, and yeah. tried to come up with some. You share some of the concerns with water tones. It says the chief here is willing to move forward to implement this agreement, but not with a formal agreement, written agreement. You must have some concerns or they feel they need some more information on his letter here. They were running it back through the board for some more information. And I don't have the same concerns that they do. They have uh, union issues. Um, and so it makes it a more significant issue for them to be able to finalize the contract. Um, so I don't have the same concerns that they do. Um, some of the concerns are um, recently, and like Todd mentioned, uh, Johnson Creek has been calling Watertown a lot. Um, and so the perspective is, is, but it's more EMS than it is fire. So from our perspective, it isn't as big of a deal as it is for Watertown, particularly in relationship to their union requirements. Uh, so uh, from our standpoint, no, it's not as substantial, but we're not, we're not gonna finalize it until all three do. There was a meeting scheduled for Monday the afternoon, um, but it was canceled due to all the, the virus concerns. But um, the city manager, mayors, and village administrator, and the, the three fire chiefs were scheduled to meet to go to address um, some of the current the concerns that Watertown had. But that'll be rescheduled. I only have one, one recommendation they can take back to the chiefs on their letterhead. They might want to turn the Watertown one around. It's backwards. What do you mean backwards? Their logo. Mine's Can't up. see it. Can't see it then. Yeah, their logo's backwards. It's actually upside down and backwards. <laughs> yeah, just. I just something I noticed, so I just thought it was kind of funny that they were <laughs> upside down and backwards, and they're the ones that are having issues with signing it. They they also have, you know, they they've had requests. They they've been running to Lebanon almost yeah. nonstop. Um, they get a lot of crossover into Dodge County with. Phil's asked them to cover their territory, so it's a it's a broader spectrum from them than it is for us. We we tend to be more related to here and and, and fire, and so it it's not as big of an issue for us. They if they sign agreements, they got EMS, they're running all over the place. Then that's like who's in Watertown? Yours is right, huh? <laughs> Yeah, I think this could be a good thing. Um, 
for everybody involved right now, especially oh. since we've had staffing problems and. And I think it's, this is only the beginning. Yeah. We, we, as fire chiefs, have to start thinking outside the box um, to provide the highest level of service at a reasonable, you know, yeah, cost dollar to the citizens. Yeah. Because uh, it's it, things aren't going to get better for us. So, you know, we'll, we'll have to look at, you know, manpower and and you know how we can possibly come up with shifts or share you know people at certain times so yeah the only thing i think that we should keep track of is as we start doing these uh, calls and we start running to these other calls if this gets fully approved is keep track of fuel costs to see if how much that spikes over the year i don't know if it will or not but that's one thing i can see happening that and maybe some maintenance on the vehicles. Well, and, and when we, if you look at the uh, the first page there, where where it lays out the response mm -hmm. responses as far as location and, and what we're taking, um, I purposely did not want to offer our ladder truck. You know, it's it's old, and I don't want to you know use it any more than I have to. And it's not a, a vehicle that travels well on County Highway A going to Watertown in a hurry. So um, I just told them that when we come or go to Watertown or over to Johnson's Creek, we'll come with an engine company. And the same when um, they're coming here, Johnson's Creek's coming with their ladder truck, Watertown's coming with an engine company again just because of the county highway roads gotcha i don't think that the gas is going to change much though because we're already in mavis we're just responding later so oh, yeah you're right yeah this is Makes this sense. is a faster response it's all the way around so we're they're coming here we're going there we're already doing it anyways i mean a couple of years ago when we had well how many years ago when that railroad car fell over and our guys yeah I, did a lot of the work on that um and when they had the big tire fire up there uh we, we're still responding it's just yeah. how fast yeah don't, and i don't know those numbers i just didn't know if we responded to almost every one of them or if there's going to be more that we're going to hit because of this now where we wouldn't get the mavis call before if they didn't need us no that that is something uh that we have to work out yeah. with with the chiefs at at what point does dispatch do yeah, the auto aid down. Yeah. because um if it's a an alarm we're not going to activate and have communities come rushing in again because it costs every community money to to roll the rig um but now if it comes in and there's smoke reported you know flame showing yeah it's going to be activated and, and we're going to roll but we have to um come up with whatever that criteria is going to be um so dispatch knows this is when the auto aid goes into effect yeah that'll all be part of your policies so. right yeah you guys got that so. well i think we're okay we, huh yeah, we'll beat that one to death <laughs> Well, it's better to ask <coughs> questions. Thanks, Todd. Yep. Anything else from anybody else? No. Call the roll, please. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Ms. Fritch? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. Thank you for coming tonight. So that takes us to item H, Ordinance 1211. Would you? Now, this is the third reading for this. This is our um, change in our staffing. Uh, so what do we do for third reading? Title. Ordinance 1211, amending Chapter 153, Officers, Employees, and adding Article 5, Neighborhood Service Officer, Section 153-9, Delegation of Authority, Issuance of Citations, and Corrective Orders. I move adoption of Ordinance 1211. Second. 
Any discussion? I think we pretty much beat that one to death over the time too. Call the roll. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Ms. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. Moving on to item I, Ordinance 1212, second reading. Do what you do for second reading. Ordinance 1212, amending City of Lake Mills Ordinance Section 660 44, official zoning map, City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Parcel identification number 2460713242003. Owner, CNS Unst Trust, Tearing a Point Subdivision. Okay, did we have any changes since our last reading? Dan, anything? No? Okay. We'd, we'd like, they'd like this to be moved to the third reading. Okay. Um, and it might be safer to do that too in case we don't have a meeting. So, I mean, the last, a, the last time you held this up because right. of some issues related to right. the construction plans. And those are? We have resolved the water one. Uh, Dwayne and Dan are working out the exact wording on the developer's agreement. that will be tied into that. Right. Um, <clears throat> we haven't finalized the, pub, the construction plans, but they, we've already notified them that they have to follow right down the, the municipal code. So, and they've agreed to that. They haven't, they haven't held anything up there. So we're good to go. We're good to go. Mm -hmm. I move it um, that we suspend our rules and go to the third reading. Second. Call the roll on that, right? Mr. Foster? Aye. Ms. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Motion passed 4 0. Okay. So that leaves us now to being in the third reading. So do you have to do a third reading? Read the title again, right? Ordinance 1212, amending City of Lake Mills Ordinance Section 660 44, official zoning map, City of Lake Mills, Wisconsin. Parcel identification number 2460713242303. Owner, CNS Unst Trust, Tarnina Point Subdivision. Okay, so this is our third reading. Uh, it sounds like we've got everything covered that we need. Call the roll. Oh, oh, we need I a need motion. a motion. Need a motion. Oh, yeah. we didn't have the motion. Not yet. Thank you. I will move adoption of ordinance. 12-12. Second. Thank you. Jumping the gun here. All right. Now, is there any further discussion? Seeing none, call the roll. Ms. Fritch? Aye. Ms. Schmidt? Aye. Mr. Fields? Aye. Mr. Foster? Aye. Motion passed 4-0. Okay. So that gives you your third reading. And that helps with that, right? Okay. Recommendations for future agendas at this time? Any? We already talked about the uh, archaeological report that will be on the agenda. Right. Uh, TID number five will be on the agenda, I think. Um, is there anything else we have coming forward? Public hearing for the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. Uh, public hearing for the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. Would you repeat that? The I couldn't hear you. The public hearing for the comprehensive outdoor recreation plan. Okay. Yeah, then the contracts for Mud Lake. Because those bids yeah. will be in and. I have some of those. Mm -hmm. Okay, so seeing those items and future agendas. Um, and seeing nothing else coming before me, meeting adjourned.